My name is Linda Freyer. I'm the founder of Calasco Accountants Limited. We are an independent accountancy practice based in Woolerton in East Nottinghamshire. Today's webinar is all about the VAT domestic charge for the construction industry, which commences on the 1st of March 2021. The way VAT is paid between businesses in the construction sector will change. Companies like yours who are VAT registered and CIS registered uh, will be no longer pay VAT to the majority of their subcontractors. The VAT will only be paid by construction companies to firms who supply only labour and our employment businesses and the merchants and companies that sell building materials without any fix. The payment of monies between firms in the construction chain will instead pass reversed charged and no VAT will be paid. The aim is to collect VAT from the few contractors at the top of the construction tree who interface with the customers rather than numerous smaller subcontractors who Haitian RC think are less reliable. We have a diagram which shows how the way that the reverse charge will affect the way that the money flows in the industry. So if we take a look at the slide, what we can see in the white column is the VAT before the 1st of March 2021, the model that we are all um, associated with. So if we start at the bottom of the chain with a self-employed worker who is non-VAT registered, at present, the worker raises his invoice for £100 plus no VAT. He pays HMRC no VAT. The invoice he raises is to a labour subcontractor. He charges £110 plus £22 VAT, 20%. He has no VAT to recover on his VAT return and as such, he pays HMRC £22. The labour subcontractor invoices the major subcontractor £120 plus VAT at 20%, £24. He in turn recovers the £22 VAT that he has received on his purchase invoice and pays HMRC £2. The major subcontractor invoices the main contractor and there's a charge of £130 plus £26 VAT. Again, he has VAT to recover of £24, meaning the net payment to HMRC is £2. In total in the chain, £26 is paid to HMRC. From the 1st of March 2021, the reverse charge applies. If we turn to the blue column and look up the chain, what we see is that the self-employed worker will not be impacted. He will raise an invoice for £100 plus no VAT since he hasn't VAT registered. What we do see though is that when the labour subcontractor raises his invoice for £110, there's a reverse charge for VAT since he is raising his invoice to a major subcontractor. As such, on his VAT return, he has collected no VAT. He has no VAT to recover as previously, and now the payment to HMRC is nil. Continuing along the chain, the major subcontractor again raises his invoice with a reverse charge of VAT, and as such, he pays HMRC no monies. What we can see is that the main contractor working for the end user raises an invoice for £130 plus VAT of £26 and again has a reverse charge purchase invoice and therefore he pays HMRC £26 on his VAT return. So HMRC still received £26 along this chain of invoices but instead of receiving those monies from three businesses, they are now only receiving the £26 from the main contractor, that contractor at the top of the tree. So which invoices are we looking at when it comes to reverse charges? 
After the 1st of March 2021, a payment must be invoiced or an application made under the reverse charges if the following conditions are met. The payment is for construction services, the definition of which is, as, um, is on the next slide, and the customer payer is CIS registered. And both parties to the contract, the payer and the recipient stroke contractor and the subcontractor are VAT registered. And the payment will be standard rated or reduced rated. What we need to remember is zero rated supplies will be continue. So when you're working for a new build and these will be billed as they are now, but no VAT is chargeable simply because they are zero rated but this is different to the reverse charge. Turning to the next slide, what we can see as a reminder is the definitions of what is covered by the construction service. And so what we need to understand is whether this applies to our business, are we within the definition of construction services? So at um, Annex A, as an example, any businesses where we're working in the installation of heating, lighting, air condition, ventilation, power supply, drainage, sanitation, water supply or fire protection is included as a CIS supply. Annex B um, is um, a construction service whereby they are provided within a package with those services listed at Annex A. So for as an example, if we are providing a burglar alarm alongside fire protection, which is listed at Annex A, then the total supply is covered by the reverse charge. So we have built a flow chart to check whether you, you will, uh, whether you should be requesting VAT using a normal invoice or whether you should be reverse charging. So what you can see on the screen is a flow chart for you to follow as you become more familiar with the reverse charge. So the first question that we should ask is, are you invoicing for the supply of labor only as a gang master or employment business? or are you invoicing for materials only? So taking the first part here, um, the supply of labor only is not yourself maybe as a subcontractor, just turning up to work to provide labor only services. And um, the supply as a gang master is about providing what is in fact agency staff, uh, whereby you would arrive on site or send employees to site and they were controlled by somebody else and simply paid a daily, weekly, hourly rate. So anybody working at that is providing construction services, the answer to that question will be no. We then look to say, is there any part of the supplies you are making to the customer within the scope of CIS? which is why it is so important to understand from the previous slide that what you are doing actually falls within the construction industry services. So if you are doing electrical installation, as an example, the answer there would be yes. Is the supply standard rated or reduced rated, i.e. ordinarily 20% or 5%? If the answer is yes, you're doing electrical works inside a factory that already exists, you would answer yes. Um, if you're working on a new build property and you would ordinarily zero rate, the answer is no and you continue to zero rate. Is your customer VAT registered is the next thing to consider. Now, ordinarily, you might not know the answer to this question but you do need to know for the purposes of this new reverse charge legislation. So we'll look at this in more detail, but assuming that the answer is yes, we carry on down the flow chart and we say, is your customer registered for CIS? Again, this is not ordinarily something that you may know and you cannot assume. 
So we'll look again at how we'll find out if the answer to this question is yes or no. But assuming that I'm doing work for XYZ builders and they are registered for CIS, of course, the answer to the question is yes. And has your customer provided confirmation that it is an end user? Um, we'll look at the definition of end user in a little bit more detail. But for this purpose, we are saying it is a building or asset to be used by me or rented out. If that is the case, the answer is yes, and normal VAT rules apply. If the answer is no, I'm still doing that electrical work for XYZ builders, then my supply is now a reverse charge and I need to change the way that I invoice. We also need to be checking whether our incoming invoices um, are being raised to us correctly. We should not and cannot amend any incoming invoice from a subcontractor or supplier. And therefore, we can use a very similar flowchart to look to see whether we are in fact receiving the correct paperwork. So again, if I'm receiving an invoice from an agency that's provided me with labor only, the invoice that I receive should charge VAT. If it isn't, I need to think about very simply whether my own business is registered for CIS and VAT. I'm working in construction, I would imagine, and therefore the answer is yes. Is the supply, um, received within the scope of CIS. Again, why it's very important to understand all of the um, definitions of the CIS scheme, because we need to ensure that, as an, an example, we know whether a scaffolder should be reverse charging his invoice to us or not. So if my um, invoice that's received is just from a merchant, the answer would be no, and I will continue to receive those invoices with no um, reverse charge, simply with the current VAT legislation in place. Um, we need to consider the zero rated, 5% and 20% banding again. And again, we just need to think whether that piece of work is for myself as an end user. Therefore, if you are working with subcontractors, receiving an invoice from subcontractors, and you work in the construction industry yourself, then most of those invoices that you'll be receiving from the 1st of March 2021 will be subject to the reverse charge. So let's start looking at detail at some of these parts of the legislation that we've just discussed. So we have two mandatory checks, as we've seen from those flowcharts. I have to understand whether the business is VAT registered. And I can use the VIES system online to check whether a business is VAT registered. I also have to understand whether a customer is CIS registered. So what I can do is I can use the same system as I would to verify my subcontractors and HMRC have agreed the workaround to this. What does a reverse charge invoice look like? HMRC have set out what they think um, the VAT invoices should look like when we raise an invoice from the 1st of March 2021, that is a reverse charge invoice. On the next slide, what we have is an example of what HMRC have used in their legislation. As you can see, this is not a zero rated invoice. We see the word in domestic reverse charge applies. This example invoice is not prescriptive. Um, your software will probably not let you calculate the detail that is shown at the bottom of the invoice. Um, as an example, Zero Free Agent, QuickBooks, Sage, their template invoices do not look like this. Do not worry, as I say, this is the example in HMRC's legislation. 
What is exceptionally important and absolutely mandatory is that we use the wording on our invoice template that our software generates for MTD compliance that says that the invoice is raised under the reverse charge and section 55A of the VAT Act 1994 applies. You must be stating that on the sales invoices that you raise, and there's a good chance that the person that you're raising the invoice to will reject your invoice if that is not the case. You need to be compliant. So we need to look at this working for end users in a little bit more detail. So when we work for an end user, um, this is not covered by the reverse charge. So we need to make sure we understand who the end user is when we're working in the construction industry. So the definition of an end user it is a business who will use the building or structure themselves in their own business, either as a building to sell or to rent out for their own use, e.g. as offices. So development and property companies and house builders are end users because they will rent or sell what they have commissioned. These people deal in assets rather than supplying construction services. So if we have a supply with a reverse charge and a non-reverse charge element, what happens there? So we need to look on a contract by contract basis with our customers to see whether they are an end user or not. It's a, like a light switch, it's either on or it's off. If part of a contract is for work that the customer will sell on as construction services, or where there will not be an end user, this will taint the entire contract and they are not an end user of a part. The whole contract must be reverse charged. Some of you may have been in receipt of end user statements already. So you may be familiar with what they look like. Again, HMRC in their guidance and legislation have given some very specific wording that you can lift to use um, with your um, suppliers and customers. So it is recommended that there is wording in the contracts that you have that would be sufficient to amount to an end user statement. And if you're already working on a contract it is recommended that there is a letter that forms an addendum to that contract um, to be added. So what if an end user stops being an end user? Okay, well, you'll be pleased to know and uh, the simple position is we never look back. The next invoice you issue or application for payment you will make will simply be under the reverse charge but you will not have to rework um, the VAT on earlier invoices or payments, and we won't be doing any kind of time apportionment. So the, um, the world of development, as we know, um, changes, and there may be instances where developers recommission sites, um, and as such, you may find yourself in a position um, where the end user does stop. Um, being the end user. On the flip side, what if a customer becomes an end user? Um, if a customer who has reverse charges suddenly sends an end user statement to you, you simply go with the flow. You start charging VAT on the next application for payment or invoice issued. Uh, you do not attempt any kind of historical reworking. There are some special types of customer. As a general rule, if you think a customer like a utility company or a local authority is likely to be an end user, always ask them if they would like to give you an end user statement for VAT purposes. Uh, local authorities are unlikely to be on supplying construction services 
the suppliers made to them or more likely to be part of their works for the local authority on their own assets or provided as part of their statutory obligations. So it will be normal for them to be end users. So what is not covered by the domestic reverse charge? Well, the supply of building materials and the purchase of goods. So if you buy um, building materials only from your local agent, then that is not within the CIS scheme. So it isn't covered by the reverse charge legislation. You will continue re to receive purchase invoices with VAT. A note of caution here is that we feel that subcontractors may merely split their invoices to you into two, one for materials and one for the labour fix. The CIS scheme and the reverse charge both focus on the nature of the supply under the contract. So if the contract is for supply and fit, it wholly falls within CIS and the reverse charge applies to all invoices that you receive from those subcontractors. That is definitely one to watch for compliance purposes. The CIS scheme and the VAT reverse um, charge and um, then we do need to think about um, those subcontractors that are paid gross. Um, if we have a subcontractor that is paid gross, he will be paid all of the money due under the contract. But if the VAT is to be reverse charged in line with the rules we've looked at today, he will be paid in full, but without VAT. Where the subcontractor is net paid for CIS, he receives payment for all his materials, but he's subject to his 20% deduction on the balance still. And when the invoice is to be reverse charged, again, in line with that flow diagram, he is paid no VAT at all. And that includes on materials because they are part of a supply and fix contract. The other exemptions are about the employment business. So again, just reiterating that we are talking about agencies who provide labour. This is when somebody arrives on your supply site from an agency, they just have a particular skill set that you have asked for, and you pay them for a number of hours, and they are within your control. Do not confuse this with a subcontractor or providing subcontractor services where you just turn up to do labour yourself. So this all takes place from the 1st of March 2021. So we have to think about the transitional arrangements. So in VAT, there is a concept called the tax point. This is the date which governs when VAT can be claimed or must be accounted for. The normal rule is that in construction, the tax point is the earlier of the invoice date or the payment date. If you receive money on or before the 28th of February 2021, the payment will include VAT. If you receive an invoice dated before the 1st of March 2021, the invoice must show VAT. If an invoice dated the 28th of February 2021 or earlier, the VAT charge, reverse charge, does not apply. VAT should be shown on the invoice and VAT should be paid even if the payment is made after the 1st of March 2021. It's all about that tax point. If an invoice is dated on or after the 1st of March 2021, we need to be considering the reverse charge looking at those previous screens. So if we receive a payment in advance of the paperwork, so say we receive a payment in February 2021, the payment is deemed to include VAT. You will invoice um, for that work and we will simply say on the invoice that the tax point um, of February was when the, um, when the payment was received and we should show the VAT to accord with the payment. In terms of self-billing, HMRC have allowed a three month concession intended to simplify this transition period. 
So when an application is made for payment under a contract, which provides for stage payments, then we send an application. It's not an invoice. We haven't triggered that tax point. So what will happen is if you have made an application for payment before the 1st of March 2021, so long as the invoice is paid by the 31st of May 2021, the payment will carry VAT. In terms of retention payments, the rules for the reverse charge are the same as the rules for CIS. It does not matter when the work was done. The date which decides whether to reverse charge is the earlier of the invoice date requesting money or the payment date. So simply ignore when the work was done. So we're beginning to build up a picture now of the different way we'll have to raise sales invoices. We need to think about the software that you use and what the VAT returns will look like that you're going to be filing with HMRC. The domestic reverse charge settings in your software need to be applied. So when you're raising the sales invoice, we need to be selecting that it's a domestic reverse charge where that's the case. When we're in receipts of purchase bills, we need to be ensuring that the VAT reverse charge um, is added to the system. We are not simply selecting zero or nil from VAT. So what I'd like to do is share with you how different the VAT returns will look like um, for periods post the 1st of March 2021. In the first column on the slide, we're looking at pre the, uh, pre the 1st of March 2021. So we have a subcontractor who has raised an invoice. He's raised an invoice for 100 pounds plus VAT. So in box one, we're declaring that we have VAT to pay over to HMRC of 20 pounds. And in box six, we are declaring net sales of 100 pounds. On the flip side, the contractor receiving the invoice would enter into his box four that he had VAT of 20 pounds to reclaim and that he had net purchases of 100 pounds. All change on the right hand side. Transactions under the reverse charge need to be filled in on your VAT return as follows. Box one, there is no VAT to pay over to HMRC. So this is nil but we are still going to declare our net sales to HMRC in box six. So whereas ordinarily we can check our effective rate of VAT on our control checks before submitting our VAT return, we will not be able to do that. In terms of the contractor, his VAT return is going to have an entry in box one. That's ordinarily sales. Um, but box one is showing notional VAT on purchases on which the reverse charge has been applied. Box six doesn't have any value in it because there is no sales in this transaction. But that is making my effective rate calculations impossible. Box four will include the input tax on the reverse charge purchases and box seven as normal will show the hundred pounds net purchases. So you can start to see that this looks a very different VAT return and one that will be very hard for you to control and check. So we need to ensure that the inputting on your software either by yourself or a member of your team is done in a controlled manner and in these initial periods, you're looking at the detail behind those VAT returns carefully. I also want to cover off cash accounting with you on your VAT return. Um, there is a problem in reverse charge legislation for businesses which cash account. 
Strictly, the VAT on a reverse charge purchase should be accounted for in the accounts of the customer when the subcontractor or supplier issues an invoice and not when they paid, which is usually later. Um, many firms in construction cash accounts bring in into their accounting system only sums received and paid. Um, the transition needs careful planning um, to ensure that nothing is missed or doubled up from a transaction point of view, but you also need to think of the cash flow impact. This may require some planning. For any businesses that are registered on the flat rate scheme, you will need to weigh up whether it's still beneficial to be part of this scheme. Um, VAT may no longer um, be good um, under the flat rate scheme for you, um, and it is unlikely that the flat rate scheme would be good to continue with. This is all significant changes within the construction industry, but there is reassurance from HMRC that they will accept that there will be errors and they will apply a light touch when dealing with errors for the first six month period whilst businesses are complying. But you do have to act in good faith. If you make a mistake, we have to correct it under the normal VAT correction methods and they are and HMRC are saying that no penalties will be charged. So what is the likely impact on firms which are predominantly subcontractors? Well, there's a cash flow impact on those businesses, undoubtedly. And um, many subcontractors may have old VAT, which they still need to be paying over, um, but they won't be collecting VAT during these coming months. Subcontractors will also be paying VAT when they buy materials but they will not be receiving the VAT on the contracts that they complete from the 1st of March. And so there may be instances where many subcontractors become VAT repayers. And it means that HMRC will owe them money each quarter. The way to get this money back quicker is to potentially complete VAT returns on a monthly basis instead. So you may look to want to move to monthly VAT returns. This, of course, means additional uh, compliance deadlines. Um, so 12 VAT returns rather than four VAT returns per year. On the screen, we have a checklist of the things that you may want to consider um, in more detail. So look at your cash flow, consider the monthly repayment. Prepare to revise the way on your system and your templates so that you can use um, and raise those VAT reverse charge invoices. Um, you need to learn how to check um, VAT and CIS registration of customers. And of course, very importantly, any of those end user statements you do need to be retaining as they do form part of your accounting records. So a housekeeping point, where are you going to keep those? So for those of you listening that are contractors who work with end users and customers, what is the likely impact? Well, you're going to have very little VAT to offset when it comes to the completion of your VAT returns. And the vast majority of the um, monies that you collect from your customers, as we saw on that chain on the initial flow charts, um, will be paid to HMRC by yourselves. So again, you need to consider how your cash flow will cope with those changes from March 2021. Looking at the checklist, what we can see is we need to think about what your invoices and application for payment will look like with any reverse charges. You may, may need to be preparing end user statements for your customers and asking them to sign and return them. So look at that detailed legislation from HMRC and the wording. And um, think about um, with your legal team, the contractual terms and um, going forward in any new contracts. Um, watch your VAT payment dates. And if you do need support from HMRC in terms of payment of liability, 
ensure that you're asking HMRC in advance for assistance. Also consider to become a monthly VAT um, trader if you wish to. Um, and also make sure that the subcontractors that you're working with um, understand the VAT reverse charge as well, so that the invoices that you receive from them from the 1st of March 2021 are correct. Thank you for listening today. We've covered a lot of technical detail. Um, my contact details are shown on the screen. Um, please feel free to get in touch with us if there's any questions that you have or any information that we can assist you with in this much changing and complex area of VAT legislation within the construction industry. I hope you found it informative and I wish you and your business well with the, with the changes. Thank you for your time.